What's up, y'all? This is um day oh man, it's day two fifty. <laughs> Live studios. Oh dude, awesome. Thanks for saying thanks and uh I hope that you it was a really helpful article. Morangia, what's up? Jib right back at ya. Um so yeah, today's two day two fifty. It says two forty nine on there, but just know it's two fifty. And uh, um, today I'm making the cup. This is going to be fun. I'm going to make a, an item. This is an item where you get this item and it allows you access to three or four secret dungeons. So um, you find it like, I'm not sure where you're going to find the cup. But anyways, you'll find this, this cup thing. And then on some screens you find in the overworld, there'll be like a, a fountain. And if you, if you get your cup out and you use the cup on the fountain, you drink it and you like, like get you get tripped out. You kind of get poisoned or something like that. You fall to the ground and you wake up inside this different crazy psychedelic dungeon, and you have to like fight your way out of it, learn some skills, stuff like that. So it's going to be kind of a different type of dungeon. So that's what I'm making today. <clears throat> nice, right on. Thanks, Lime. What's up, Arcane? Yeah, Lime, that was, thanks for saying that, because, yeah, it did take quite a long time to write that. I've been writing that article since the Kickstarter. I had an outline written, and then I would go back and write more and more of it, and then, um, and then, yeah, and then finally it just took me another week of, like, refining it to get it done, and then putting it on Gama Sutra and all that, so it was a lot of work, but I hope it really, really helps some indie devs out there, you know, to just be something where you don't have to fail. You don't have to fail at your game. You can, you can, um... You can prove that your game is worth it. Nice. <laughs> yes, yes it is. It's very, very psychedelic inspired. So yeah. <clears throat> so um, let's start doing it right now. Let's add the cup item. What's up, Extreme? Welcome to the stream. So um, question. Should I, so I just, I just talked about this concept of the cup and whatever you you get this cup, you drink from a fountain, you wake up in a different dungeon psychedelic thing and you have to fight your way out. Should this be a cup, a simple, tiny, little, unassuming, humble cup, or should it be a golden, crazy looking chalice? What are your thoughts on that? So we'll add the cup item and put it into the component constants and all that. You like the cup? Nice, me too. I'm liking the cup idea. It's it's um there's irony in that, right? Is it irony that I'm thinking of? You have this tiny little cup that, are, that grants you access to so much of the game. You know, three different dungeons of the game are going to be accessed. Nice. You like the cup too? What's up, Boogie? Yo, Boogie, did um did it give you a notification today? I've been see like thinking about that because every time I start up um game show, the thing that I'm using to live stream, it always changes. It's it's. It changes my title or what category I'm in on Twitch and I have to go back and manually fix it. So maybe that's part of it. It works. Nice. Right on. You think it should be a cup too? Awesome. All right. We're all in agreement here. It's going to be a cup. <laughs> you know, you think of the red cup? <laughs> oh my God. This is so funny. The red cup. Yeah. Okay. It should be a red cup. Good call. <clears throat> I'm thinking you might actually find this on your ship, Songbringer, before you leave. Like you, before you get on your bike and leave to go explore the planet or whatever, you you find this cup. And so you have this kind of from the beginning of the game, but only if you find it. You know, it's like something, maybe you have to explore inside your locker or something like that and you get your cup. <laughs> yes. Oh, Boogie, yeah, the cup is, okay, so you get this cup, right? And the cup is is a really important item. It give, it grants you access to three different dungeons. They're not different. They're all kind of similar dungeons, but they're they're where you gain abilities. What you do is you you 
you when you're running around the world you find this like um you're gonna find these fountains um and the fountains are like the they have like poison in them or something like that maybe poison or just some kind of psychedelic substance so they're like these psychedelic fountains and you use the cup on the fountain imagine there's a fountain in the middle of the screen right here you use your cup and then you drink from the fountain and you you're poisoned you fall over you like trip out or whatever and you wake up inside this other crazy dungeon psychedelic land and you have to fight your way out or learn a skill or there's some way you have to get out like you're stuck there for a minute um so that's the concept behind the cup and the secret dungeons or whatever so yeah three three out of the nine of the dungeons in the, each world will be this sort of psychedelic cup secret dungeon thing phoenix master race does this have music? I'll definitely check this out, but I'm not sure if I can check it out on the stream. What's up, Arcor? Uh, yeah, I, I watched all the videos you guys sent me yesterday. What was which one was it? Yeah, so that's what that's what that cup is. So let's start creating it. <laughs> I love the red cup idea. That's so great. So if it's a red cup. Wait, wait, let's get that cup up again. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! This is the best idea, Lime. Oh man. Alright, cool. So I'm thinking this color, right? Is this, is this pure red? It's very close to pure red, but it's close to pink, purple. Okay, so let's take that color. This is the color of the, the cup right here. It's um, it's not a passive item. It's equipable. It's not craftable. You can never craft a better cup or anything. It's zero. You never can. You can never buy one. You only have one. Cool. There we got that. That part hooked up. Yes, got to be that. Nice. Yeah, cool, man. You switched to you switched to ITCS, yeah. Nice, right on. Cool, man. Game's going great, dude. Yeah, I got four new enemies. Oh, I oh, I haven't even showed you guys the new enemy. Oh, yeah, yeah. What? I didn't see it. <laughs> you can upgrade it to a blue. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, let me show you guys the other enemy. I'll go into God mode so we can run around and find him. I'm not sure where. Oh, wait. We could just um, put the player right where there's some of them. Um, so this new enemy, there's the Rossi Pine. If I'm not, let me show you guys the Rossi Pine just in case anybody was not here on yesterday's stream. This is a cool porcupine enemy. He's pretty awesome. I'm still gonna up, I'm still gonna give him more like spiky quills that he shoots out. So for now he just shoots out rocks. But um, this is these these porcupine. They're called the Rossi pine in honor of Bob Ross. Oh, and check it out when they hurt you, they get up on their hind legs. Well, they're really hard to. Do so you see that? Like getting up on his hind legs. They're pretty hard though. It shoots. They shoot so often that they're like really difficult now. So I might be, I might tone them down a little bit, make them less difficult. Um, and then there's these other guys too. Um, these tentacles. Uh, they're pretty funny. Nice BC Warrior game. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, man. Dude, that's so crazy. What a bad teacher. What about let? What? Oh, oh, let. Is that a new is that a new thing with a new JavaScript? <laughs> Spray paint on the ground? <laughs> um, and these other guys. Uh the Centicle. These guys are pretty funny too. Yeah, so these guys, uh, they're, they're walking on the screen here. 
Uh, they don't want to get on the screen. Why don't you want to do that? What's wrong? There we go. So yeah, these are the other guys. They're the little tentacles. Tentacles. I'm calling them tentacles. They're like sentinel tentacles. They're just they just sit around dancing, moving around. They're really dumb. But they do have a lot of hit points. So yeah. Does those guys too. Ah, since he has six. Yeah, good. Good. This whole game is meant to be is this whole game is inspired by the Legend of Zelda, the first one. All right, so we'll start drawing the cup and then we'll draw the fountain and drinking from the fountain and all that. So it's gonna be mostly pixel art today. Uh, I'm not really gonna work so much on behavior and mechanics and stuff like that. I'm gonna be mostly just drawing. <clears throat> so we do need a good place to put a fountain. <laughs> wow. Right on, right on. I think <laughs> uh. Let's get a map of this overworld. Wait, no, I think I have one. Oh wait, no, this is the one that's broken. All right, never mind. Yeah, let's run this, take a little screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Okay, so this one. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm thinking these are going to kind of be like dungeon entrances, right? These these technically are dungeon entrances. They're just more hidden. So, what up, Chaka Beer? Uh, yeah. So let's do this one, Dungeon Two. Let's make Dungeon Two. No, wait, Two is already one that has um uh the specific type of entrance art. So we might as well go three. Let's go with Dungeon 3. Wow, Dungeon 3 is really far away. But oh well. Okay, there it is. Uh, this is one, seven, zero. We're gonna turn that into a secret dungeon entrance. And oh, we gotta turn off this. Nice, really? Pearl skills for sure. I don't got pearl, pearl skills either, but regular expressions scare me. I'm like, ah. Yeah, this is a perfect area for putting um one of these special dungeon entrances. All right, good. Okay, we got his place. Now we need the cup art. So let's start doing that and the fountain art, and the drinking from the fountain. And then we probably will get into doing some programming uh, at the end of this stream, putting all this art together. All right. <clears throat> I love that it's going to be like this, the red cup. Maybe there should be a blue cup. Yeah, totally. It's art, art, art. Game programming, art, music. I'll get this. I'm getting this um, document open with all my HUD sprites, and this is where I put like icons for items and stuff. Yeah. Right. The the thing about regexes is they're, di they're they're like different in every language or not so different but like 
there's different ways to, to write them and everywhere you are, PHP looks a little different. Perl's looks a little different. You know, command line regex looks a little different. Vim regex. That's what scares me. I'm like, dude, how am I supposed to learn these all these different formats? I know they're they're basically the same, but then they have these their you know minor differences. <clears throat> What's up, Zatrick? I'm working on this. I'm working on this crazy cool item where it's just a, it's a very simple, unassuming party cup, right? And you get this cup, and you you can drink from these fountains, and you get poisoned, and you wake up inside these psychedelic dungeons, and you have to fight your way out. <clears throat> yeah, that's what's so magical about them, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I, dude, the regex regex wizards out there, they can write that stuff and and know what the hell that stuff says are amazing. Yeah, that's the thing though. They're close. Where's the difference? I'm gonna expand this by a pixel. Whoa, what? Expand one pixel, delete. There, now we got a cup. Let's shrink it down. <laughs> this, oh, there, just leave it like this, it's perfect. I'm not necessarily gonna use this exact art here, I'm just putting it in here just to get some proportions at first. Meh. Oh, what? Wow. Oh, sweet. Now this is good to know. Thank you, Zatrick. Wow. Cool, man. I gotta, I gotta take note of this for sure. All right. This is gonna become a layer now. New layer base slice. And I'll name it the cup, item cup. All right, ready to go. Wolfski! What's up, Wolfski? Yeah, these are all the, these swords are the, um, the different ghost swords. Yeah, these are all, they look better on a, on a good background, especially this black one, but yeah. They're um they're all the ghost swords. There's a poison sword, lightning sword, regular ghost sword, fire sword, ice sword, and fear sword. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, that's how a lot of teachers are in this world, you know? So you I'm sure you'll grow beyond it quickly, man. You already know a lot. Yeah, Wolski. So Wolski, this item I'm working on is the cup, right? It's a, it's like a simple red party cup, and you can drink from these fountains you find in the overworld. And if you drink them, you get poisoned. You fall over. You're like ah. You but you wake up inside some crazy dungeon. You have to fight your way out. All right, all right. So yeah, there. I just drew this cup. Um. I mean, I, I just copied this cup, so I'm gonna actually draw a cup based on this sort of red color and stuff. Let's get a little um, palette going. The first thing you gotta do with, with like Photoshop is um, turn off the layers, viewing the layers. I mean, the slices, because they mess everything up. So there, now I'm gonna draw a little palette. This is kind of, Right, these two colors. And then maybe this white, yeah, you gotta have this white on top. 
It'd be nice if we had a background here to, to see this stuff on. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. Yes, I have. And I'm trying to uh, share the best parts of all that with this video game. There we go. There's sort of a background we can use for this. All right. And this one last color I think we'll need. Yeah. All right. Now let's draw a cup. This is one of the easiest things I've ever drawn. A simple red cup. So easy. What's up, Trevor? Welcome to the stream, man. Nice, yeah. No, and don't feel for it. Don't feel like you have to hate plugging around here. I love plugging. Bandy grass, is he cool? Yes, it's the party cup. Is he twitch.tv bandy grass? Untitled broadcast. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, one of the another great artist I love to watch is Anton Kudin. Anton Kudin is great. If you guys, you guys are probably already familiar with his game, um, Megasphere. And is he Anton? Yeah, he's Anton Kudin. This is probably a good link to go to for that. Yeah. So here's um, if you haven't seen this guy's another great pixel artist. And yeah, there's many others out there. So it's a little bit, that's a little better. <laughs> oh, he's on Space Boy Gaming? Space Boy Games? Cool. Cool. Yeah, I'll stick him out. Can I show the new features? Yeah, yeah, I just did. Um, but uh, I'll do it again a little, a little bit. Um, I'll have to go into God mode so I can show it quickly without changing my position. But yeah, there's two new enemies since um, well, it's four new enemies this week. So let me go around. I'll show you the four new enemies. Um, if you haven't seen, there's also if you haven't seen this game in a while, there's diagonal movement now, and there's four items you can use at once. So there's not only there's A, B, X, and Y items. Oh, and there's also these things. These are um, these are these tiles which can grow back. So if I go away, they'll come. They'll grow back. So those are gonna be kind of interesting, right? They're kind of a gate item. You need to have some kind of item which can damage things, like either the sword or bombs or something like that, to be able to get past those grow back tiles. Trying to look for those new enemies. Where are you at? New enemies? Man. We're not getting much new enemy love around here. Oh, here's some. Yeah, these are the um these are the porcupine guys. Mode. Yeah, there's those guys. There's oh, these guys, these tentacle guys are great. They're they're hilarious. They're really dumb. They don't fight you or anything, but they do attack you if you get near them. Um, and then there's these red guys. We can see we can find these red guys. Oh, here's some red guys. So these red guys are also quite dumb. They just bounce around the screen. But they're supposed to be dumb. They're supposed to be really simple enemies to fight. And there's one more enemy. Um, what the hell is the new other enemy? Wait, we saw the we saw the porcupines. We saw the red ones. We saw the green guys. What's up? Oh, and then the tentacles. Okay, yeah, we've seen them all. The new guys. So there you go. There's some of the new stuff. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I was almost done with that. Yeah? Nice. Handmade Hero. Yeah, I've heard of Handmade Hero. I've never watched his streams or anything, but yeah. Is, is he good? That's great. Yes, the game is basically SNES now quality. I I didn't want to do that for a long time, but it makes a lot of sense. The game really does need four buttons because there's so many items you can use, and it's just stupid. And with today's game controllers, every single controller out there has at least four buttons. So the game should have at least four items you can use at once because you should be able to blink, you know, and then use your one ability and then use an, your bombs, you know, all without having to switch to the inventory. Uh, God mode should be called BC Warrior. Yes. Oh, the fans. That's right. The fans. There is one more kind of enemy. Let's see if we can find some fans. The fans are great. They're one of my favorite enemies. Nice. You like the grass? Right on. Yeah, there's one more enemy. Where's he at? Come on. Find some fans. They're great. They're like, they're like sort of a cross between an anteater and um, an elephant. And they're also quite dumb. They're just a very, very simple enemy. It's super, super dumb. Meant for sort of the beginning parts of the game. Ah, here we go. There's some. Yeah, so these are the fans. All they do is they circle around and they hug edges. So they'll, they'll like... They eventually, they start out kind of chaotic, right? But then they turn into order really quickly. And it's surprising to find them that way. And it's actually kind of cute, I think. They're also quite nice. They don't really try and attack you unless you're in their way or whatever. And then they'll get angry and attack you. They're like, ah, get out of my way. So yeah, they're, they're cool. It's really funny, you can accidentally sometimes find them well, where they'll walk onto the screen. And if they if they walk onto the screen, they'll all get in a line and actually walk together. And it, it looks like they're walking single file. It's really funny. But these guys get really interesting too when, it, when they're around like some isolated blocks in the middle of the screen. They'll walk around and around and around those blocks. They're, they're really Metroid inspired. You know how like in Metroid you had those one kind of enemies which would circle around and around and around in certain blocks. Nice, man. Cool. Yeah, they are. They're really cute. They're incredibly cute. Especially with how, how they get in a line. Wow. Wow, right on. Nice. What up, Eventable? Welcome to the stream, man. Nice. Okay, yeah, so let's fix the bottom of that cup. Well, that's, I don't know if I like that either. Maybe just like that. And a little dark on the edges like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh man, this is the best game ever. It has a red cup now. All right, and uh, we should, I'm gonna verify that this thing's slice is the right shape. Yeah, we're good on the slice and it should still have that name, item cup. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so we're ready to export this. Let's turn off this background, it's ready to export. Save it for web. The thing about this is when you do save for web on Photoshop is you gotta make sure if you have slices, you got to go all user slices or else it just puts out a whole bunch of slices you're not going to need. These blank slices. It's like, why would I need a blank slice? Can't they make Photoshop a little smarter? But no. Okay. So there. We got a cup. Yeah, Metroid. Yes. <laughs> Once the red cups are implemented, the game's done. Yeah, we need ale. Next comes the fountain. Uh, now let's test it out and make sure that this item works if this player already had it. Like, cup. One. Yeah.
Yes, yes, you can. You can. Definitely put that on your resume. I'll be your reference too if you need a reference for that. Yeah, he, he thought it up. Oh, let's turn off God mode. We don't need that anymore. We're going to only be in this screen for a little while. This screen is going to turn into a, a screen where we have a fountain and we're going to drink out, the, out of the fountain with the red cup. Yay! <laughs> it's a little too saturated. We, we got we to gotta, um, tone down that saturation a bit. You know, a normal red cup is going to be that saturated, but our red cup is going to look a little different to fit the aesthetic of this game. So let's tone it down just a bit. Definitely not that much. There's zero. Yeah, see, even negative 10. 15, maybe. Let's try negative 15. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right on, right? It's definitely got it's gotta be that important. Triforce cup, triforce, cup. Definitely similar. Yeah, see that? Just that just that tiny bit of desaturation helped. Maybe even more. Yeah, I'm gonna try a little more actually. Ew, it crashes in that screen. Yeah, yeah, I'm on I'm on El Capitan. And thank the thank the people at Apple, it hasn't crashed in a while. Maybe since this latest update it might have fixed something. But yeah, for a while there it was crashing every day. I was like really pissed off, but it hasn't happened in a minute, so knock on wood. I'm gonna try that same desaturation about negative ten or so once more. <laughs> right? It's like the most important item in the game, but it's just a red cup. Love it. Yeah, I like it. I like that better. That might have been a bit too much. Nah, yeah, that's okay. Oh, we need some text too. We have no text for it. Um, maybe it should be like, like it should say something like, it's a stupid cup. What am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> right? Because, you know, eventually people are going to play this game and they're going to know that the cup is this special item. But so it might be funny to put it's just a stupid cup in there as a description. Right? Wait. What? Really? Oh, Engad. Yeah, what's up, man? No, entity, okay, entity component system. Let me let me give you a little rundown on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well Oh, the behavior. Oh, you're talking about behaviors. Okay, right, right. <laughs> yeah, so um Hangad, let me give you a little rundown on behaviors, okay? This is how it it kind of works. You uh first of all, let me point you to the links that I use to Think think of how to do it. Did, wait, did I already send you these links? I'll post them anyways. Behavior trees. This is, this is how I learned. I learned from this article right here. 
Um, I had to read this article a few times to understand what the hell behavior trees really were. Right? What's up, Jimmy? Welcome to the stream, man. Um, so there, so behavior trees are, are, they work like this. Um, I, I wrote my own format for how to, to, um, to run a behaviors, but it should, it should be, this is not really the, the heart of it all. You could write this your, your own way, you know, however the hell you want to write this, you could write your own behavior trees pretty simply. It doesn't really matter how the data format is. It's just a matter of how you process these. So a behavior tree is a way of apt, a way of um, making your AI data driven. So you're not coding any AI. You're right. You're making it all. It's almost. It's essentially a scripting language just for AI. But it makes it so you never have to go and write new code for AI. You just um, you just write a new behavior. So basically, behavior trees work like this. Every one of every single line of this behavior tree returns true or false. If it returns true, it depends on what what's what kind of parent item is running it. So select will select one thing underneath it, and sequence will run everything underneath it. So this sequence right here, and when it's when it gets to, when the behavior tree gets to this point, it'll go okay. I'm running a new sequence, and then it gets into the items for that sequence, and it goes all right. If it runs the first one, if stuck, all right. Is this be is this entity stuck right now? If so, it returns true. If not, it returns false. Very simple, right? Now, sequences work. They do everything underneath them, right? So if it, anything in a sequence returns false, that whole sequence returns false, and it stops running the sequence at that point. So if stuck, no, it does not proceed with this dir ran. It doesn't proceed with the speed one. But if stuck is true, then it does the dir ran. And dir ran is something that always returns true, so it's always going to go and do speed one. So you, so you're kind of you should be getting the drift by now. If not, please let me know. And I'll clarify. But select does one of the things. So select will either run this one or this one or this one. It'll run one of the things underneath it until one of them returns true. So if if this sequence returns false, it will go on to the next sequence and try this one. And if this one returns false, it'll go on to this one and try this one. You get it? You get it? It's a very simple way of creating a behavior for an entity that is completely data driven. So that's how I'm able to create AI so quickly. And also I don't have to write any new code for AI. Most of it's already written. The only thing I might have to do is create a new type of little behavior and hook that up into my behavior system or whatever. So let me know if that's helping. What's up, Manic? Henko, do I have a link list? Would be great to have those links you get and posts. Oh, you mean a, li a, a list of all the links I've ever shared? Oh, man, sorry, I, I'm not really gonna, sorry, I don't have that. But um, if, you know, you can always watch my old YouTube videos and get get all the links that I've been sharing, man. So the YouTube, if you wanna check that out, it's uh, YouTube, see, Nat Weiss. This, if you want to dig into my videos, you're basically going to find all that, all those links. Manic, yes, I think, I think, I'm not, I'm not exactly certain about this, but I'm pretty sure the behavior trees are a subset of state machines. I'm not sure though. Oh, Hengad, oh, so you don't understand how this language works? That's because it's a language that I wrote for this game. So yeah, it's not, this isn't, this isn't a language out there and this is no, this is just something that I created for this game. So that's why you probably don't understand it. How did I create it to code that easy? I don't know. I don't know what you mean by this. Can you clarify? Uh, would you recommend a publisher or crowdsource? Yeah, it's very open-ended. Oh man, um, Lime Studios, man, this is a really excellent question. Um, first of all, you know, this is a very personal question, not, not personal, but it's, it's, it's very, 
it's it's your own your own answer is going to be better than any answer I would give you in general, right? But um, why not both? Why not take a publisher and crowdsource? In fact, that's probably one of the best ways to uh, get a publisher to be looking at you is to do crowdsourcing. In fact, I've gotten two publishing no three publishing deals, not deals, but three publishers have actually contacted me since I did a Kickstarter and. Um, and one of them, I'm actually, cons it's not, they're not actually a publisher. They're just a, per a company that ports the game. Like they would port it to PlayStation or whatever. So because I did a crowdsourcing, I did Kickstarter, I found this awesome company that might port my game to PlayStation 4 and Xbox and all these other things. So I say, why not both? You know, in fact, probably both is the best way to do it. You understand noise generation? Sorry, man. I, I don't really either. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you're crowdfunded, some a publisher is going to be way more interested in you. How the hell can you make your own AI language or whatever it is? You just start small, man. You start with one little thing. First of all, you go go check out that article I read or I sent you about how to how behavior trees work and then start with the very simplest parts. You know, when I started this whole behavior tree, it didn't look like this. It wasn't a complete language. It was just two simple things. All it was was select and sequence. And then I find I got simple things like if. Like okay, I got select done, sequence is done, if is done, direction done, speed done. And once you get it once you get it going, then it's easy, man. So it's just, you got to start small, start with baby steps and work your way up. Nice, man. Cool. True. Yeah, that's why, yeah, that's why it's even better to do your own crowdsourcing first. Because once you've, once you've crowdfunded your game, it gives you that confidence to be like, do I really need a publisher? You know, do I, do I really want a publisher? So... Yeah, that's why I highly recommend doing crowdsourcing um, to, you know, prove your game, um, create value for it, and, like, you're just, it's just always, it's, it can, even if you fail, even if your crowdfunding campaign fails, it's still a really good thing for your for you and your game. You know what I mean? You've built a following, you've, um, you've, you can take that following, that awareness, and everything you've learned into the next thing you create, you know, so... I don't mean to ramble again too much on a tangent there. Uh, but yeah, okay, so back to making this cup. The simple item, the cup. What's up, Last Talon? Thanks for hosting, man. Welcome to the stream again today. I'm making this item called... Uh, yeah, thanks, man. I'm making this item. It's a simple red party cup, and it allows you access to some secret dungeons. Yes, exactly. Yeah, totally. It is. It definitely is. Mm -hmm. It's not only a good bargaining chip in the pu in create in a publishing deal, but it's a good it's a good confidence booster in yourself that you know that you can do that, and you don't necessarily need a publisher. And so that will make your public. If you do actually end up taking a publishing deal, you will take a much better publishing deal because you're not going to be desperate. You know what I mean? You're going to be confident. Exactly. And that's that's how you stay in control with the negotiations with the publisher is if you have that confidence, you know, but true. It, Manic, what you're saying here is really, really important, right? You, do, you should never, ever let a publisher walk over you and take, you know, and take advantage of you because I've been taken advantage of already in a publishing deal. Back in the 90s, I was I had a game published and I only got five percent of the profits of that game. And um, it was a horrible deal. My publishers were assholes. I hated them afterwards. Um, and they got bought by Hasbro. Hasbro turned out to be worse. And it was just all around a very, very bad thing. For 10 years, I didn't even want to be in game development for because it was such a bad thing. So anyways, that's another reason reason why I just recommend doing crowdfunding or some or some other kind of alpha, alpha funding or alternative funding or something like that to just give you the funds you need to do your game without necessarily needing a publisher. Yeah. It's frustrating to learn C++ when it's so hard. 
What about learning a simpler language like Python or something? Okay, so back to this. What's the next step? We got the we got this cup created. Oh yeah, does it have a text now? Yeah, cool. We got it's just a stupid cup, <laughs> or is it? Or is it? It's actually one of the most important items in the game. All right, okay. So we got the cup. Let's um start drawing the fountain. Yeah, I'll start drawing the fountain. I'm gonna take a screenshot and we'll just we'll draw over the top of it. I'm gonna do a screen size tiny, or I'll just always screen cap. We'll do a little screen shot. Yes. All right, there we go. So I'm using this this screenshot as just a base to have something to draw on top of, so we can draw a cool fountain. Yeah, don't don't be afraid to say no. Totally. Yeah, totally. If they came to you, totally. Yeah, yeah, manic. Good advice, and always. Yeah, that's like that's one of the things you learn. That's why I say that that that, that game development is a. It's got at least four different disciplines: programming, art, music, and business. Business is actually really important, and that's one of the one of the. It's a simple thing called business posture. Posture is in business is who is who is leaning towards whom, right? If you got two people talking to each other and one person's leaning towards the other, that's like a really aggressive posture, right? It's like the other the other person in the conversation is going to lean back and go, "Whoa," right? That's a, it's a very similar thing in business con business dealings, right? If one person is leaning towards the other in a business deal or conversation or whatever, the other person's going to lean back. And so so if a publisher's coming at you all aggressive and stuff like that, and they're the ones that found you and they get offering you this crazy deal, you know, be wary of that for sure. Yeah, yeah, good advice. Nice, right on. Mm hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna draw on top of this and yeah, so this is just a mock-up piece of art, right? I'm just gonna like quickly just draw on top of it. In fact, we can keep we can keep that guy. I'm drawing a fountain. If anybody just joined the stream, you're like, what's he doing? Draw a fountain. Uh, keep in mind, though, that um, that C sharp is not as universal as you think. Um, take a look at Axiom Verge, for example. It's a game. It's a great game. It's an amazing game. If you haven't played Axiom Verge, I highly recommend it. Axiom Verge, they wrote the whole thing in C Sharp uh, using Mono Game. And um, their first platform that they released that game on was uh, for PlayStation. And they had to get a whole bunch of special tools from PlayStation to be able to even get their C Sharp to compile on it. And they're still having trouble getting their PlayStation Vita port to work, they can't. They haven't got it working yet because of C sharp. But if they had they written the game in C plus plus, they would have easily ported it because C plus plus is the most portable language there is. So that's one reason why you may not want to use C sharp. But then again, if you're using C sharp with Unity or whatever, Unity already is already supported on PlayStation, Xbox, whatever. And that also depends on what what platforms you want to release your game on. You know, so. Um, I'm just saying keep that in mind, right? I'm not, I'm not saying C++ is better. I'm just saying keep it in mind. Portability may be important to you or may not. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unity is, uh-huh, right. Yeah. Unity is a pretty great engine. They've done, they've done quite well with it. It's, it's really great to see such a, such a great engine that is, makes, makes game development easier for a lot of us, you know? Um, especially beginners, especially beginners getting into the, the scene or getting into game development, you know, Unity is a pretty good choice, I think. Game Maker 2. I mean, isn't isn't Game Maker? Didn't they make some kind of thing so you can port Game Maker to um, PlayStation or whatever? I don't know. I'm probably talking out my ass on this one. All right, so I don't really need to do all this. I'm just doing it anyway. But I'm gonna draw sort of a granite-looking fountain, so it's gonna be based on these same colors. All right, so yeah, now we've got that, and we can just draw a fountain here in the middle. Nice, cool. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. Nice. Yeah, it is. It is. The great thing about the indie game development scene right now is that we've got these amazing tools and it's much quicker to write games and there's so much information out there about how to make a successful game. The bad part about that, that or the negative side of it all, you know, everything is yin and yang. There's black inside the white. There's white inside the black. Um, the, the, so the negative part about that is there's a lot more competition. So it just means that your game, if you, write, if you want your game to be financially successful, then you're, you have some stiff competition. There's because there's just an oh, there's oversupply. There's so many other games out there, and so your game really has to be amazing, and um and be proven, you know, to be successful. Yeah, I don't know. Is this? I definitely recommend sticking to C sharp, C plus plus, unless it's really really frustrating for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And these are these are the ones you don't really have to worry too much about if you're making good games cuz these games tend to get glossed over. It just it sucks it, it sucks that we're getting too many of them on green light and they're taking attention away from other games, but I don't think they're 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 that effective, you know. It's true though. There are a lot of those kind of games that are just like man, why the hell did they even put this on here? All right, I'm gonna draw a palette. All right, so those, those four colors should do it to be able to draw this fountain. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and color over the rest of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. Good and bad, for sure. Light and dark. And let's also get the player right next to the, um, right next to the fountain. What up, buddy?
Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the cup is, is is in the game. Now I'm working on the fountain part of it, yeah. So this will be fun, right? This guy, you're gonna, there'll be a fountain and then he'll he'll drink from the fountain. So there'll be a, some kind of custom animation for the player to drink. So I've been stoked about this. And then and then it's gonna get even better because like um, probably like tomorrow or the next day I'll be working on this like psychedelic new dungeon where you're just tripped out the whole time. Different kind of enemies, totally different kind of world. It's gonna be very interesting dungeon to build as well as play, I hope. Okay, so now I got the player next to it for reference. <clears throat> All right. Here's my palette. Let's start with proportions. So I'm going to draw like a basic shape for this fountain first. Yeah, right. <laughs> Will I? Oh, so tempting. Uh... Yes, there. Yeah, there's gonna be some crazy cool shaders for sure. Yep. I don't know. I really hope. I probably should. I probably should take Azarus's advice here, right? <laughs> uh. Shaders for sure. Shaders are fun. I used to be really intimidated by them. Like, man, shaders are hard. But now that I've kind of got the hang of them, they're not that hard. Look at this. This is the most awesome fountain ever. That's all we need. There. Dude, it's done. I'm, just, I'm dialing in proportions first to see how tall it should be. Should it have like a fountain type? Like like some kind of... What, are they, what do you call it when there's a character inside of a fountain? Or a... Like a little kid pissing or whatever, or like a an angel spitting. What are those called? Should they have that? Or should it just be like a little trough that you get the water out of? It would be okay, so it would be less assuming. It would be it would be like, what the hell is this? It's just a trough. Okay, right? Because if I put some kind of special character and made it look all awesome, it's gonna be, you know, less tempting. Or I mean it's going to be obvious that there's something special to it. Hey, what's up, Tobor Prime? Man, I haven't seen you in a minute, dude. How's it going? How's your game? Yeah, all right. Cool. Hmm. All right, I'm thinking... We'll start with the trough. We'll start with like a trough thing. Right away? All right, cool, man. Everything's going great, dude. Everything's amazing. What's up, man? Oh, I'm still going to be streaming for a minute. Okay, it's got about 10 minutes. Oh. So I'm going to go ahead and eat without you for a while. Okay. All right, man. Okay. You think a statue with one of the enemies, water coming out? Cool. I like that idea, too. But it's less... It's less like, it's more obvious that there's something special here, right? It's kind of funny that this is, you know, a st like a, a stupid red cup or whatever. Is that about the right size for the bottom of it? Maybe.
<laughs> it has a giant red solo cup in the middle of it. I like that idea, but I think it'd be a little too obvious. Yeah, a naked ancient person? Nice. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Okay, nice. Awesome. All right. Now that 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 makes sense right there. Yeah. Okay, exotic fountain it is. Let's start with the base. This like trough part of it or whatever. Uh, so yeah, Tobor, sorry. Um, yeah, you just joined the stream. So basically, this is um, this is a, a red cup. It's a very unassuming red cup. I think you might find this on your spaceship at the very beginning of the game. If you are if you search around enough, you find this red cup. So you get the red cup, right? And you're like, oh, it's just a stupid cup. But this actually is one of the most important items in the whole game. So up here, there's going to be um, a fountain or something like that. And you, you use your red cup on the fountain and you can drink out of the fountain and it has poisoned waters in it and you you like fall over, you faint or whatever and you start tripping out. You wake up inside this crazy dungeon. It's all psychedelic, um, cool shaders, like totally different art. It's gonna be very much, it's gonna add a lot of variety to the game. And then, so inside this dungeon, you're stuck there until you find your way out. You either fight your way out or you like, you, you acquire items while you're, or like abilities while you're inside it. You fight crazy types of enemies and stuff like that. Um, so that's the concept for this dungeon and the and the cup and the fountain. So the fountains, there's going to be like three fountains in the overworld where you are able to drink from them and get poisoned and get into these secret dungeons, basically. So it's like a secret dungeon entrance. Uh, no, I use a I use a graphics tablet. Much much prefer that to mousing. It's much faster. Once you're used to it, it takes a while to get used to it, but it's very, very, um, very fast once you're, once you get it going. Hmm. Yes, it's a, it's a plastic red cup. Yeah. All right, this needs to be a little taller. I want to be able to see some water in it. Yeah. So I swear this was not inspired by smoking weed or anything. Scout's honor. Is that a little better? Yeah, you can probably see more now. Which which Zelda? Yeah, definitely some kind of purple water. Nice. I gotta check this one out. Like a basin, right? Okay, tell me. Oh wait, can you send me a picture of this of what kind of fountain you're thinking about in Zelda? 
What up, Arcane? I'm making fountains. You drink from these, or there, you get a red plastic cup, you drink from these fountains, and you get poisoned, you wake up inside a, a secret dungeon. Yes, right on, you got Axiom Verge? Nice. Yeah. That's my favorite game I've played since I was a kid. Oh, like these? Oh, right. Hmm, that's interesting. That's kind of cool. That way I could, that would be pretty easy because I could put water on the ground and that would be a lot, that would be really easy to do water. That way. And then it'd be also kind of cool to do these, like, these uh, pillars in the middle and stuff. And it, it'd be really easy to draw all this. I like that. Yes, it's a red plastic cup. What up, Pedro? All right, so um, this is a good idea. Should I do? Should I do this instead? I like this. I, I like this art idea. This direction for something something like this. So it would be you'd see some water on the ground. Let's do a quick mock up of that. So we'll save that other layer and then put some blue on the ground. Like we might have this much water. Right, roughly on the ground. So it's, it's like, it's almost like a pond like fountain. And then you'd have some pillars. Maybe not, maybe it's just semicircle pillars and then something connecting them on top. I kind of like that. <laughs> uh, you, you like that too? Oh, it's private. Mac McDev, what's up, man? Sweet, I'm glad you... Oh, thanks for saying that. I really hope the Gama Sutra article really helps some people out there because I just... I've, you know, I've personally dealt with really hard failures in the game development business and I just hope that other people don't have to... I want that... I want for other people to not have to go through those kind of failures in order to attain success, whatever that is, whatever you define success as, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Yeah, Arcane, I can't play music. I can't play music. It's if if it's unless it's not copyrighted. Is it is it is there absolutely are you guaranteed sure that there is no copyrights attached? But I will listen to it later. For sure. Hmm. Oh yeah, the Gamma Sutra article. Yeah, let me post that for you guys. This is um, I'm really really hope this helps, cause uh, this one. Yeah. I know copyrights, right? Yeah, it's not that it's not that Twitch would. It, I think Twitch does do some kind of thing where they they'll um they'll silence your video if they detect any songs. But YouTube's even worse. They'll make it so that people can't watch this video on YouTube later. So awesome, man! So you're making a little hex grid. It's like, is it randomly generated? That's cool. Yeah, nice. Whoa. Nice job, man. Whoa. 
What's idol? What's up, Ludima? Ah. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I like this idea, but let's keep on with this other idea first. Because this is kind of a little less assuming, I guess. You know, it's supposed to be like, um... It's supposed to be like, what is this? What is this? You know, you're supposed to be curious. Like, what? what is this fountain thing? What is this going to do? It's starting to look like a hot tub now. Yeah, maybe bigger like that. Maybe shallower. But now it looks too 2D. Oh, the title didn't sound nice, right? It's not a, It's not meant to sound nice. It's meant to deal with the realities of what other indies are going through right now. And it's sad, but there's so many games out there that fail. And that's the point of this article is how to cure that. How do you, how do you guarantee success? You know what I mean? There's a very positive, it's a very positive article, but it's meant to, you know, challenge that concept of failure, you know? Uh, no, I have a fiance, but not a wife. Yeah. What up, Peter? Right, yeah, this is kind of what I was thinking. Like a fountain, pool. <laughs> uh, are you are you talking about uh, Sheila Booth? When is this marriage? Yes, you're invited. Everybody's invited. When is marriage? We don't have a date yet. We don't have a date set yet. We'll figure it out, though. I think it kind of a shallower one like that, yeah. And then, so it'll have like some kind of figure in the middle, maybe about that tall. <laughs> right? You want to, you want to see it live streamed? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I know. All right, man. Good night. Yeah, okay, I like, that was a good height. Wait, yeah, I don't need that. Okay, I'm gonna draw this base first. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Yeah, especially because it's it's essentially has poison in it.
play around with colors to see if that works better for shading, like that color. Yeah, that does for the outside. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. So anybody that just joined the stream, I'm working on a fountain thing that's full of poison and you drink out of it with a red party cup and you wake up inside a secret dungeon. And um, yeah, I'm just kind of messing around with some art here for the bottom base part of this fountain thingy. And then there'll be some other kind of uh, like either demon or statue or something here in the middle of it. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go and put it inside my another drawing where I've done some other like granity, rocky art so I can quickly create this and make it look higher quality. Nice, Ruluma. Right on, man. Good for you. Good for you. Is it these guys? No. These guys? No. Statue. This one? No. It's kind of like those, but not... Where's the zero, zero statue? Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, man. Hmm. This actually will be tied to levels. It's more like a level entrance. We'll put it in level and let's call it three fountain. This thing is currently about 55 pixels wide. Oh. Bird. Maybe we put a bird in the middle of it. Right? They singed me. I've been burned. Burned by my company. What? What happened here? How did I get those pixels like that? 
So weird. Yeah, you're welcome, man, and good night. Have a good one. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Wow, 42 seconds. It's like so far in the past. Uh, I know. Same thing with the hitbox. A dead pig head in the middle? Interesting. That could work. Whoa. I don't know what's up. Yeah, it's been like that this whole week, man. Ever since Bob Ross started streaming. But he's not actually streaming. But you know what I mean. Really? Oh, I never knew that. Hmm, that's kind of weird, huh? So I have two of them sometimes? Two, two brushes? That's weird. Oh, singed. Ah, uh, see, I read singed. What? Huh? What do you mean? Create a background colors, make it a little easier on the eyes to work with. So there, I'm just creating a little palette, and now I can turn that guy off, and I can use this palette to draw something. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna add some green moss. What? What were you talking about, though? Forcing it, forcing equality in what?
Blood pigs. That might be good. That might actually be the right kind of vibe to add onto this thing because uh, because it has poison inside it. What happened to the hand tool? It doesn't work. Hand tool doesn't work. I'm writing, I'm writing Photoshop a letter. Oh, minorities are blaming some IT companies for having a bad male to female ratio. Oh. Oh yeah, I don't know I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know how to deal with that. That's kind of out of my league. I'm not really a manager manager of a company or anything like that. All right, we gotta start putting some water in here too. That'll help it look right. So I'll get the. I'm gonna get this watercolor. Watercolor. Watercolor is where would I find that? Overworld, probably. Common, maybe common. Water. Water. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, it's it's got to be game show. That's weird. Maybe should I try and do? Should I go back to my old school super crazy green cursor? Did you guys were you guys around when I had the green cursor app or whatever? This is before OBS could even show my mouse cursor. So that sucks. It it's not recording my cursor at the same point. Yeah, those, you know he wasn't live, right? Hmm, wait, what color is water again? Oh, okay, all right. Well, yeah, that's kind of sucks, though. I didn't, I didn't know it was doing that. Is it just doing it today? Was it doing it before? Was it doing it yesterday? Was anybody here yesterday and, and noticed that, maybe? So that's not really the color of water. What what color is water again? Let's get the green color of water. That's gonna be in colors. Dark light, mountain, sand, dark. Dark water is that there. It's pretty bright, but it should be more like like what color? That's um, brightness 33, so let's make this one brightness 33. Or maybe not quite so dark there. 
Something like this for the color of the water. Yeah, you did you watch it? You noticed it before? All right, all right. Hmm, nice. Yeah. I know, but lots of people didn't know that. Lots, I didn't even know that, but everybody thought he was live. They're like, why isn't Bob talking back? Why isn't he chatting? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this whole thing should be a hexagon shaped. Yeah. God rest his soul. Yeah, the water's gonna reflect. So I'm gonna add a I'm gonna add a um, a separate layer for the water so that I can add that layer in particular onto the the reflection mask so that the shader does its reflection and all that. Yeah. So. That's going to be, that shouldn't be too hard. I oh, see, I don't like that. Hmm. This is still looking kind of, kind of too jump too. I don't know. I like it yet. You want it to be a pentagram shape with blood? <laughs> yeah, I kind of think it should be hexagon shape too. Yeah. This circle is just not quite. It's not quite doing it for me. Pack Pong. Ah. Nice. So to anybody that just joined the stream, I'm working on drawing a fountain where the player has a cup and drinks out of this fountain. The fountain is actually poisoned and the player wakes up inside a secret dungeon. So I'm drawing that fountain that you'll, you'll drink from first. So we got one, two, three, four pixel levels here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I like it with the hexagon. Wait, that's that's one, two, three, four, five. yeah, six, okay. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't. I go and I look at them all. I do. <laughs> it looks warm too, nice. 
I don't know how it is for where you guys are, but man, it's been cold here. We're having a crazy cold snap in California. Yeah, this really helps it to look better with these straighter edges. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like that too. It looks like a bathtub so far, kind of. Or a hot tub. Or a hot tub time machine. Did anyone see that movie? I don't. I've, I've seen it in my Netflix queue, but I never tried it. Was it any good? Has anybody seen it? Whoops! Oh, I did that one wrong. Does Jib drink it too? Oh, I forgot about Jib. You know what? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna gloss over that. Okay, so let's say as a player, right? Your your hero, your character drinks from this fountain. He falls over. The screen goes black. You wake up in this psychedelic world. Does it really matter how Jib got there? It's a good question. It's a good question. Maybe Jib should drink too. That would technically be. More accurate, right? Send Jib into, or maybe, maybe you do. Maybe you have to play this world without Jib for this dungeon. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Robots can't drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jib could maybe not go with. Yeah, this is already looking better with this hexagon shape. I like this a lot. Some nice highlights will really help here too. <laughs> I hope not. I am from Oregon though. Oregon's got a lot of hipsters. Looking better, looking better. Let's add a nice little highlight, highlight to these edges. Ooh, what happened to the highlight color? Is this the highlight color? Oh, there's one more color here. Yeah, there it is. Super bright high co highlight color.
I'm gonna add some kind of like runes or something on the outside. All right, it's looking better. I don't know about this edge over here. This edge needs something. Yeah, that one little pixel. Alright. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking it. Okay, well, we're ready to do um let's do an animation now where the player will drink out of it. I think I'm gonna have the I'm gonna take this art and um and the animation where the player drinks and um and do these first before I do some kind of column in the middle. There'll be something here in the middle, I'm not sure what. You know, like some kind of demon or whatever. Um, but yeah, I want to do this first to get these mechanics going. So, this is a good start. I like this. This will work, I think. Nice. Yeah, I saw that one. That was good. Oh, I forgot. Shadows can really help. Just a tiny bit of shadow can be awesome. So let's let's turn on this shadow. Looks like I'm doing 22% here. Just pure black. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Good call, Azenris. Yep, looking at it in the mock-up, it's always a good call. Throwing it in the game first, always a good call. You know, whenever whenever you can kind of take a step back. That's what, you know, looking at it in a mock-up art or putting it in the game is always taking a step back. You're like, oh, does it, how's it, how's it looking?
What's up, Rocket Bunny? Uh, I'm working on a, a fountain that you drink out of, you get poisoned, and you wake up inside a secret dungeon. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just for browsing. Yeah, that'll look pretty good. With lighting, with actual lighting, that with the game's dynamic lighting, it will actually look a lot better than that. All right. Cool. All right, let's do an animation where he's going to drink. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do this animation inside this same document. So if I have like... Yeah, so it'll just be easy to do that way. So let's grab the player. Um, the player will start out in, in like a west or east facing. I guess east facing should be the right way to go because that's the way the default is for most of these animations in the game. Is east facing. Now we can just flip the X, flip it on the X to get a west facing as well. So I'm gonna get the main hero in his um, where he has. He's got his sword sheath and he's idling facing east. So idle, sheath, east. And I'll probably have to do this for without the sheath sword as well. So you can, you'll technically, you'll be able to play this entire game without the sword. If you, if you're that hardcore. Okay, so this one's called Rock Drink Sheath East. And we need to make it a little wider now. So, maybe, maybe. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, that's going to be enough. <laughs> Activate no episode. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Just like in Zelda 1 where you could, you could play the whole game without getting the sword. Same thing here. I've always thought that's badass. Super good challenge, right? Can you beat Zelda 1 without getting the sword? Ooh, so it's a good thing I did... I'm putting these together because, like, you know, is he going to have to bend over a little bit to get that water? So far he is. Unless I make it bigger and taller, so it's more of a, um, a not a hexagon, but a octagon. Mm. Yes, one life, yeah. Permadeath mode, that's even more hardcore. This game does have permadeath mode, so permadeath mode, you die, you're dead forever, you can't continue that save game. So yeah, no weapons. Well, you, you have to be able to get a weapon to be able to actually get past some of the gates in the game. Like a, a simple gate is like something you have to hack away with your sword to get past it, you know? But you, you're still going to be able to hack get rid of those gates with bombs or throwing your top hat or something else like that. So yeah. So you'll have to have at least one weapon, I think, to beat this game. But it doesn't have to necessarily be the sword. Yo, what's up, Tom? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I was talking about um, I was talking about him at, in his current pose. He would have to lean over to get it um, to to drink to fill up his cup, right? So if he has a red cup in his hand, his arm is like you know that long. So he's gonna he's gonna have to bend over anyways a little bit, right? Yeah, I guess this is okay. We don't need to change the fountain really. <laughs> I love it. I love that the red cup came about. Thank you. That's all thanks to Lime Studios. <laughs> Stretch Armstrong. Stretch Armstrong mode. <laughs> go, go, gadget cup. How do I say this? How do I pronounce that? Sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing stuff. I will. I'm, I'm totally ready to say this. Happy birthday! But I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh. Okay, he's going to start with this frame. Where's he going to pull this sword from? Kara. Happy birthday to Kara! Happy birthday, Kara! Happy birthday to you, Kara! You watching? You watching, Kara? Huh? All right, yeah. So frame one to look about like this. Frame two, he's gonna have to get his cup out. What if he falls in instead? So you never actually use the cup? Yeah, you're welcome, man. That be that would be hilarious, right? You have this cup item. It's the most like important item ever. It's but it's a red cup, and just when you're about to use it, you you don't. That's actually pretty funny. Oh my god, should we do that? Uh, well, the one the one downside to that is it's going to be a little bit harder to show that he's he's gotten poisoned, right? So part of this animation is going to be him reaching down, grabbing some, drinking it, and then falling over. So yeah, I like the idea of f falling in. It's really funny, but he it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as visually you know apparent that he is drink he is actually drinking some of it. So, I know, I like it too. Oh, right, right, there you go, there you go. Now that's a good idea, right? Maybe the third, the third time you drink or whatever from these fountains and you go to the third world, then you can fall in, like, right? Like, he, you already, you're already aware as a player that he's drinking whatever the heck this is. Yeah. That would that makes sense. Cool. Okay, so first we'll do this animation where he drinks. And then falling in will be like an Easter egg type third thing. Okay, so as in all the video games. You have like infinite amount of items in your pockets. So he's going to reach inside his pocket and grab this red cup. So let's start, let's start animating him doing that. It's frame one. Frame two, he... Let's 
kind of hard to show, but I'm thinking this. Oh, maybe he grabs, uses the other arm. What do you think? Should it be this arm or that arm that he that he reaches with? Does he ever take a selfie? He's he should be that kind of guy, right? I don't know. Maybe I have to get a camera item, take a selfie for something. Yeah, I'm thinking he should use this le this left arm right here. This arm should be the one that actually reaches in. So, yeah, all right. This frame. Yeah, there we go. With his arm completely back like that. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, that's the first frame. Why is that? But that way he'll, he won't be as, you won't see what's going on as much. <laughs> Look how gigantic this cup is. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> is it getting dark in here? Winter's coming. <laughs> yeah, so let's make it a little smaller, huh? Maybe? Maybe just a tad bit? Tibbly tabbly? <laughs> oh man red cup best suggestion ever <laughs> no one will see that coming uh. all right next frame Next frame, he gets his arm and his body. So his arm gets out a little bit more and, and he turns the cup to the side. And yeah, so it's gonna be halfway to kind of like. All right, good night, man.
I love animating. I used to think that man, animating is gonna be hard. It's gonna be so hard to animate, but it's it's really fun. There we go. That's a good frame. Okay, so the next one, he gets a little closer. The what? The cup gets turned a little bit more. Bit of a punch. What's a punch? Yeah, it's time consuming, that's for sure. Everything in game development is time consuming. So, whoops, I'm gonna take that, uh, this frame. This frame, his body here. Yeah, yeah, Tobor knows. You guys, hey, you guys have seen, have you seen Tobor's game? Um, dude, Tobor, please post a link to your game you're working on. Yeah, of course, man. Oh, punch, oh, belly punch, oh. Yeah, but I mean, when you party all the time, you get a belly. Let's see what he looks like without a belly, though. Yeah, that, that does look a little better, huh? Oh, yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, you gotta check us out. So what were your inspirations for this one again? Zelda 2, right? And Rygar, was it Rygar? But yeah, Shav Savage the Sharp Ghost in. Oh, did you release it? Is it out yet? Oh, it's okay, it's still coming soon. Yeah. So, um, Tobor does all of his own art and programming and you do your, and music too. Yeah. You do your own, he does everything as well. So awesome, epic Renaissance man here. Definitely. And you, you he streams too. So if you guys want to, uh, um, he's got his own stream too. If you should post your link to your stream, man. Demon's Crest. That's right. Yeah. It's a really interesting concept too. So this frame is he's gonna get a little closer and a little lower with his arm. What? Trojan. Ah, I don't. Uh, fat guy, if you're asking about, are you talking about this game and what I'm coding it in? I'm, I'm using C++. C++, man. I use Xcode to code everything and everything's written in C++. So. So that it's pretty cross-platform. 
C would also be equally as cross cross platform. Maybe more. Yeah, no, C is more cross platform. Sorry. Oh man, I just love this animation. Every time I look at the red cup, I just laugh. Nice. There was an Xcode hack? What you mean, man? Okay, I think this next frame he's gonna be his his arms gonna be all the way down. So let's duplicate this again. What up, L Spit? How you doing, man? Welcome to the stream today. Okay, this time his arm is all the way down at the bottom end. The cup is pretty horizontal. You're not going to see much more than that. And maybe this cup gets like that. No, that's too big. Maybe it's just you see some red on the top too. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, this will be okay. Maybe like that. Yeah, that's fine. No. Yeah. What? Really? Wow. I don't know why someone would publish a false copy of a free piece of software. How do you build a following, Rocket Bunny? Yeah, I just talked about it in this article on Gama Sutra. How to build a following, how to how to prove your game. Here's that link. But I talk a lot about how to build a following in this link. And there's also a ton of links in this article about where, to, how to get more information on how to build a following for your game. So check this out. Check out the links on marketing in here too. Yeah, I'm doing good, Elspit. Really good, man. Oh, wow. Weird, man. Crazy. Yeah, totally. Definitely. NEDB is a great one. Uh, you know, TIG source. Just posting your stuff on Twitter is is great, you know. Cool, Tom. Yeah, I'm glad you like it too. Oh yeah, I know, right? But you already, didn't you crowdfund your game? Didn't you crowdfund Savage? What's up, blood? Nice. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you can sometimes you can get by by just drawing horrible art. You know, you don't look at Sanic. Sanic is a meme that's so popular and he's nowhere near good art. It's actually the whole concept of Sanic is that he's bad art. So you don't necessarily need to be a great artist to succeed as a game developer. But if you want to be a great artist, then you know, just work at it. 
Nice, you like the fans? Yay! Yeah, they're great. And, oh, and this I've I totally stumbled across this when I when I walked into this one screen. You probably already saw this, but there's the the fans. So this one, no, this one here. No, not that one. Oh, what the hell? Maybe it's this Songbringer fans. There it is. But yeah, they all started walking on the screen in a, in single file and I was like, oh, this is hilarious. Yeah, these guys are great. I love them. And they have this this cool like animation where they hop up on their hind legs and they attack you and their eyes turn red whenever you whenever you get near them. So like that kind of makes them you know a balance. They're a little more balanced, not quite as cute. I know. How do I record the streams? I use I use um, Game Show now. I used to use OBS, Open Broadcaster. I don't even have the link for it on here anymore. But Game Show is the one I use now, and it's just for me. It works better on Mac, but um. On Windows, I think OBS works really good. I don't know. <laughs> Do they? They look OP? Yeah, you can, but I think... I don't know. I haven't checked this in a whole year. But when at last I checked, when you, when you upload from Twitch to YouTube, it really reduces the quality. Uh, Platformer Labs, I do not use PSD to in the game at all. I only use PSD files for creating the art, and then I export to ping, and then I use ping files in the game only. And the ping files all get compiled into sprite sheets with PVR texture format. Uh, with I use a, a program called Texture Packer for that. Whoa. Is, that a, is it a board game or something? Oh, that one came out looking horrible. Let's have him bend his knees a bit on this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, see you, Arcor. Uh, how many Easter eggs, bosses, and storylines will I have? Hopefully as many as possible, fat guy. I, I want to have as many Easter eggs and secrets as well. Easter eggs are kind of like, you know, a special kind of secret. Um, bosses, there's going to be about nine of them at least, maybe more if I have time. Storyline, there's going to be a, um, there's a big storyline that goes throughout the whole game. And I don't think it's going to be too... Involve, it's not going to be like Final Fantasy style storyline where it's, it's just most of the time you're you're in story mode, but it's going to be sort of similar to like I don't know, sort of I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to compare it to, but yeah, it'll have a story. Ah, cool, it's a board game, nice, <laughs> nice, yeah. Oh, it's a it's a RPG board game. Sweet.
Nice. Uh, there's a granny feeding birds in a dungeon. All right, cool. That's enough for this frame. It's pretty good. It's as good as you can get for pixel art in a rotated body, you know. Maybe that there. Yeah, that's pretty good for that frame. Am I pushing updates for alpha? No, sorry. I wish I, I wish I had the time for that. I would love to do alpha updates and push out stuff. But as you saw me doing it, it took like three weeks just for me to work out all the bugs in the alpha version to get it ready. And I and for that whole three weeks, I had to stop developing. I had to completely shut off all creativity. I couldn't create new stuff at all for three weeks. And so there's just then there's so much creative stuff I have to add to this game to get it ready for just the beta version. So there I just don't have the time to be able to push updates as a single developer all the time. But there will be the beta version coming up in um the next one. I probably I'm probably like February or March or Jan January maybe. I don't know. We'll see. So in a, in a couple months there'll be the beta version. Yeah, man. What's up, chimpanzee? Uh. Okay, so that's good for this frame. Let's get the next frame going where he's all his arm is all the way in the water. Basically, he just needs to let his, his hand disappear and the cup just, well, maybe the top of the cup is still visible. Thanks for following. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Maybe like that. Okay, cool. Now we got enough frames to, for him to, to be, to reach in and grab the cup. So now he's gonna, he's gonna, you know, turn his hand a little bit, lift his arm up and have a cup full of water and he's gonna drink it. And then he falls over He gets poisoned. Ferk, what's up, man? Ferk, how you been? All right, so it's kind of like these frames of it that have already been drawn, but it's going to be in reverse. Yeah, water, definitely water. Poison. Acid? Acid? Mescaline? Something? I don't know, something really awesome is in here. But, but, sort of, po sort of poisonous. How long should you spend getting that viable minimum product? It totally depends on you and your game, Rocket Bunny. That's something you you have to answer that for yourself. Like what what is a minimum viable product for you? What is what is the minimum game that represents whatever, you know? Are you talking about the demo phase of the article I was talking about? If you're talking about running a crowdfunding campaign, I think you need to make work on your game enough that you have enough gameplay that you can create a really dope, awesome, great trailer video for your for your Kickstarter page. So whatever that is, you know, you got to kind of figure that out for yourself. Oh, so okay, so Ferk, yeah, this is the, okay, so the concept behind this is you have this cup item, right? So he's got we've got the cup already created. It's in the game. Um but you find this I'm thinking you find this on your ship before you leave your ship at the very very beginning of the game. You grab this cup item if you're smart and you know what what's up. You're going to grab this cup and you, um, and that's it. It just seems like a stupid red cup, just a plastic party cup. But there'll be like a fountain on a few areas of the overworld and you'll be able to drink from this fountain and you, you get poisoned, you fall over and you wake up inside some crazy dungeon and it's like a secret dungeon. And inside that dungeon you like get, you gain some kind of ability. You have to use that ability to get out of the dungeon. 
and it's kind of like a different dungeon than the than the regular old dungeons you normally find in the game. So that's that's what that concept is. How long am I streaming? I do about two hours a day. Yeah. Oh, you mean you mean what happens visually? Or yeah, there'll definitely be ripples and cool stuff going on here in the water. Oh, you're talking about rippling it right here with this L animation, maybe. Yes. What? Um How long have I been streaming already? Oh wow, two and a half hours already? I gotta go, you guys. I gotta get some dinner. My girl was like, hey, I cooked dinner just like a an hour ago. It is. It is. It's just a stupid cup. Okay, but I'll do ten more minutes, and then uh, and then I'll go. That'll be a bit for the today's stream. Yeah, it's it's no longer really technically called a secret dungeon because these are officially dungeons. But you have to you have to know this as a player. If you don't have the cup, there's no way to get inside these dungeons. So it's a really actually important item to get. So I don't think I'm actually gonna be able to finish this animation today, but I'll, I'll keep working on it for 10 more minutes. So uh, I think the ripples will be part of a different uh, sprite or a different animation image, because that'll be part of the water. The water is gonna be a separate layer. So I'm just gonna keep on working on the actual character and him drinking it. I know. Will I stream tomorrow? Yes, yeah. Okay, so this one, this this next frame is gonna be similar to this. In fact, I can just use that frame over again. That's almost exactly what we need there. And then this frame. Okay, the only difference between that frame. All right, let's actually put these together. Put that one after that. And then this one is like this one, except the cup is level this time. So this frame, the cup needs to be totally level, which means it needs, how tall is this thing at the beginning again? Yeah, yeah, you'll be able to get the cup later in the game if you didn't grab it, yeah. Um, you get this, you get these teleport cubes which allow you to get back to your ship um, and so you'll be able to get back to your, if I'm not sure where I'm going to put the cup at this point, where in the game this will actually be, but um, I think it will probably be on your ship. So you, no matter what, you'll be able to get it later in the game if you, if you miss it. Um, yeah. Don't need that one. Okay, so there, that's the first. Oh, that's the second. So this is uh how how many pixels tall is that? Four? Four pixels there. Yeah, okay, that thing's the right height. Alright. Did I finish Sanic yet? Yeah, yeah, that guy's finished. Totally. He's pretty cool. I was showing him off earlier. And also there's another enemy. Let me, sh uh, should I show you guys the new enemies? Or keep working on the animation? I'll show you real quick. Let me get into God mode and I'll run around until we find a couple of these new enemies. There, so there's the Sanic, Hedgehoggy, Porcupiney enemies called the Rossupine, technically. Um, in honor of Bob Ross. And there's a tentacle-like enemy. And there's the fans, which are like elephants or ant eaters or something. And there's this other enemy. It's like a red circle-y sphere-like enemy that bounces around the screen. No enemies here? What's up? Okay, yeah, here's Sanic, the hedgehog guy. Or not, not Sanic, but yeah, there'll be a blue version. There's the, so there's that guy's new. Um, 
Where's the, the green guy? Oh, here we go. Here's some of the green enemies. These guys are the tentacle-like enemies. They're really, really dumb. They're just... But they have a lot of hit points. And they only attack you if you get near them. Uh, and then there's the elephant guys. Let's see if we can find those. Oh, here's the red guys. These bounce around. Where's the elephants? Come on, fans. Where you at? They're hard to find. some here we go yeah so the fans are like these just like cross between an anteater and an elephant and all they do is they just walk around and hug edges but they're kind of cute I like them uh, I used I'd used a I created a procedural texture so the ground is a I just created a texture in memory and then I used, um, uh, what kind of noise generator did I use? I basically, I generated noise and then, and then stepped the noise down into certain levels to create a terrain height like effect. And then I put that into circles and stuff like that and applied all that to the texture. And then I also add some actual Z height to the player. So the player actually dips down a little bit as he goes in and out. Yeah, the quills are not done. Yeah, sorry, I haven't finished those yet, but I'm gonna actually change those to be quills instead of rocks or whatever those. Yeah, yeah, I made the tentacles last night. Those are, those are new. All right, Elspeth, see you, man. Thanks, Tobor, appreciate it, man. Yeah, if only I had a red cup. Perlin noise, yeah, that's right. I use Perlin noise. I know it sounds kind of complex, but, um, you know, every little bit, you take every little step as baby steps and it's really not that complex. So yeah, I really do got to get going now. It's, it's like late at night my girl cooked dinner and stuff. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to shut the stream down now, but what I'll be working on later tonight after the stream is I'm going to finish this animation and make him so he can actually drink from this and fall over and wake up inside some different dungeon. So that's what's on my list, and I'll be back tomorrow. This game's called Songbringer. If anybody's just joining, you're like, what is this? Uh, it's a procedurally generated Zelda-like game. So, yeah, cheers, you guys. See ya. Have a good night.